Hi guys, this is Lars Kenseth, and today I'm going to teach you how to draw fear, but funny. So what have you historically in your life been afraid of? We'll spend the first two to three hours of this uh, call talking about that. Oh God, uh, geez. Well, I'm very uh, fearful of tech. I love tech and I buy all sorts of technology that I don't need, but I'm also really scared I vacillate between like very excited about our technological future and Will Smith in that robot movie being like, uh, I don't know about them robots. That famous catchphrase. My Will Smith impression, you're welcome. So here we have a, a classic campfire scene. It's a bunch of kids around a campfire and the dad who's taking them on this trip, who's, you know, looks like somebody who probably works at a plant or something like that. He's holding up his phone and there's a little robot arm on it and he says to the kids, I don't know any scary stories, so I thought we could just watch a bunch of YouTube clips of robots performing human jobs. So this cartoon is all about the moodiness of the background. Walk us through how you develop that aesthetic. Well, I knew I wanted to do a, a real, a, a stark black background, the middle background with the trees. And then you see the light of the moon plays on the lake. You can see it's a lake by the little waves in it. So I, I'm curious if you have any like technical suggestions for drawing light. The main thing you want to think about is where that light's coming from. Find a point in your uh, drawing, and here we've got two points of light. One is the moon in the background, and the other is the uh, the fire in the foreground. And there are three. The phone. Oh, there's the phone too. That's right. Let's talk about the phone. The phone is just a simple little glow. You can just see a little touch there. Then you got the campfire. A uh, campfire is obviously the main area of light. You've got an explosion of light on the people's faces and then harsh shadow behind them. And then you got the moon in the background there. And that, I knew I wanted to play it off the water. And then, you know, there are waves out there. Even if it's a lake, it's like, you know, you get, you get some little wave action. So they're going to play off the light too. And the fun thing is, it's like, my day job's mostly writing. So like when I just get to sit down and draw something, it's like, oh, maybe let's just draw this really pretty... <laughs> I'm trying to draw a pretty lake at night. Drawing light is definitely not the easiest thing to do. It's almost like playing pool, where you have to keep in mind all the different angles. Where is the light coming from? Where is the light hitting? For this one, you know, I put a little soft glow on the moon just to kind of, you know, make sure it reads as illuminating and it's not just some asteroid headed towards Earth. And then on the water, you just make a bunch of little lines. I mean, I kind of play with the opacity and, you know, the brightness. You know, sometimes you might want to actually throw down a bigger blotch of white for the moon and maybe vary it up a little bit because, you know, the water's not still. So, you know, we can kind of play off that. Like with the moon, it's, it's obviously very bright, but it's very far away. The intensity of the light is not as intense as it would be if, for instance, you were doing something like this fella right here telling a scary story the lights a lot more intense and I use kind of a soft brush to illuminate but a heavy brightness and then I'll just sort of erase stuff here around his eyes just thinking where the shadows would fall and for this last drawing here I have that same guy with his little ooh scary face around a campfire. What I think is fun about campfire is it's sort of the middle ground between a faraway light like the moon and a really close up light like a flashlight. It makes it a little tougher because it's diffuse light, but it's at the same time, it's everywhere. So it's almost like water. Light is almost like water. Like, you, you know, it leaks everywhere. And so you have to kind of just use your brain and think about, okay, what angles would it hit? What areas would it not hit? You know, so here I have it, you know, mostly a little glow and pooling out from the fire itself. And then I also kind of think, okay, well, given where the light's coming from, there's probably going to be a little bit of a shadow cast by that one hand that's kind of protruding into his facial area. So there are some ideas to help and hopefully not confuse you. We've got a classic New Yorker therapist office setup. We've got the diploma on the wall, we've got the therapist, we've got the therapy patient, and then we've got in the window a clown with his mouth stitched shut. And if you look above, you see that it says, Creepy Clown Ruins a Perfectly Good New Yorker Cartoon. 
So, this is the first cartoon you sold in the New Yorker. It is. Tell us the, the tale of how long had you been submitting? Was it all clown cartoons, etc.? I've been submitting for, you know, a few months and um, I'd gotten a lot of great feedback. I was encouraged to really just kind of try new stuff and and just try and find, you know, push the form as much as my my lack of experience uh, could allow. Lars, are you the clown? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, the clown does look like me. It's kind of like the sheepish grin that I usually have. He doesn't even look that creepy. He's kind of smile. He's kind of cute. If, I mean, I think. Yeah, I would say he'd be cute without the like sewed closed mouth. I like I like him with. I like it with. <laughs> Tell me about like how the exact number of details you need to convey that we're in a New Yorker therapist office cartoon. Okay, this I can speak to really well because not only have I been in a lot of therapist offices, I've also looked at a lot of therapist cartoons and there really are only a few items you need to make a New Yorker cartoon set in a therapist office. One, you need at least one diploma framed on the wall. Then you need a long couch for the, the patient to sit on. And then the therapist just needs to have a notepad. I don't think it's required, but I think one piece of greenery in there. And that's pretty much it. And I think you're good. When you're drawing a therapist in a New Yorker cartoon, there are several key things to keep in mind. A discerning look on the therapist's face is always important. A finger to the mouth is nice. A notepad. It's integral. Cross legs, another plus. Glasses, really important. But if you're not gonna do glasses, you better do some kind of facial hair. My characters all kind of look like potatoes, or I've heard lozenge, pill, thumb people. If you're having a hard time, you know, get a potato. Could be a Yukon Gold, could be a, could be a russet. And just, you know, just outline it. A fern in the corner, some sort of plant. I leave it up to you. Diplomas. You definitely need credentials on the wall. Uh, I say two is my, that's my nice number. Now, if you go to a real therapist's office, there's going to be more like 10. I mean, they throw everything up on the wall. They'll throw in certificate of completion for a uh, spaceman camp. And then obviously you need the patient, who is uh, a bear in this instance. This bear is going to be a lot of work. I don't know why it's a bear. I forget. These are all ways to make a therapist cartoon sing. So here we have a captionless cartoon. We can tell based on the volcano in the background and a city covered in burning ash and lava that we are in Pompeii. And as havoc erupts on the streets and men and women and children run for their lives, we see a small push cart. A man with a gentle smile, selling his wares. In the light of this horrible tragedy, he's decided to drop his price one whole dollar. <laughs> so you said this was influenced by Peter Arno's famous uh, Back to the Drawing Board. Well, the Arno cartoon, for people who don't know it, it shows a plane traumatically crashing. Everyone is running to the wreckage. And then there's a man who's walking actually out of the frame of the cartoon. His shoe goes over the line of the border of the cartoon and saying back to the old drawing board, which is an idiom that was created by the cartoon. It didn't exist before then. It's so incredible. I love cartoons that play with, um, you know, play with action, play with perspective. Like Arno's cartoon, it juxtaposes fear and terror with just placid, very restrained glee. Were you like, how many fleeing citizens do we need before this is hilarious? Emma, it was more like, how many can I get away with? Like, how few can I get away with drawing? <laughs> <laughs> so here we have a, a fella running. We start with my thumb head and, you know, just general ideas about the body. Look at those eyes. Just like with light, just, you know, take a look at yourself, what you look like running. Next time you go out on a jog, take a look at yourself in the, in the bank window as you pass. Hopefully not into oncoming traffic. Be aware of your surroundings. Be careful. Run responsibly. Gonna give him a little football jersey. I think that looks fun. A little rip in the jeans. He's cool. One leg out. 
it's like it's a little bit dynamic because it's uh you know he's clearly running on the balls of his feet you can see that that front right leg is just touching down and he's just gonna spring off that i don't know what it is that's behind him but he's scared it's fun sometimes to add little things like a big gulp there I have kind of falling away, like he just dropped it. It's always very important with running away people, the little cartoon lines that suggest movement. Clearly he's wearing the quarterback's jersey, number seven. Zero into the low teens, you're looking at a quarterback. This guy clearly thinks of himself that way. He thinks, he thinks he's just a, a field marshal. He's just a general marching up downfield. He's seen it all. But whatever this is, has scared the pants off him. His, his quarterback ego is out the window, man. He's ready to spill like that big gulp. Boy, I hate to be this guy. Oh, no. It's so scary. 